Hey everybody, welcome to another great edition of the Frankie Slauson Show right here on KTech and also streaming on YouTube as well. Uh, I'm your host Frankie Slauson and uh, today we got, uh, as we get ready to close out the month of May, we got a special guest with me today, a guy who is uh, really good when it comes to being a character actor with special effects and makeup. Yes, the old style of doing uh, of how to do creatures as well. Uh, I have with me Mr. Douglas Tate. Welcome to the show, Doug. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure. Yeah, it's a pleasure of uh, uh, having you on uh, because uh, you definitely are somebody that I th- I feel has a, a great story to tell about how you got into acting and, and basically all the things that you've done in your career thus far. Absolutely, yeah. You know, it's, uh, I get asked this a lot because I've, I've had the fortunate opportunity to play several iconic characters behind makeup and, you know, some masks and, and regular acting roles too and, and basically... Uh, the story is on this is that you know I started my acting career in high school and uh, and I grew up in LA so I you know it was right in my backyard Hollywood's 10 minutes away so I I when I was a kid I got a job I, I went to Universal Studios Hollywood and I saw Frankenstein and I said oh my gosh I want to do that when I turn 16 I saw him performing I said I love Frankenstein I love monsters I'm going to get that job and Sure, sure enough, when I turned 16, I went to Universal, applied, I had the height, and I started to play Frankenstein. And and that led to several characters that I played over the years while I was pursuing an acting career, never thinking that I was going to be a guy, you know, hired to play characters behind makeup. But that's kind of what happened. It, you know, it started slowly. It was like, hey, you got to get Doug Tate for your short film. You know, they, they need, it's a creature. He's great. He's tall and he's lean. He's perfect. He's great in makeup. And, you know, I, I felt like I had a natural ability to play these characters. You know, some people just have that growing up Halloween. You get into character. Sure. I talk to a lot of fans, and, and they, they, they're into Halloween, and they love it. They're like, how do I do this? And I kind of had that growing up, so it came from very easy, and having the height, it just fell into place, you know? So it, all, and, uh, so it almost feels like Halloween every day for you, almost like. <laughs> I mean, it really is. It really is. And I'm a huge fan of Halloween. And, you know, obviously, it, it, you know, I'm getting paid for it, so it makes it even better. But, um, you know, it's just it's like a kid, you know. Like, I get to, I'm on a movie right now. I've been going from movie to movie playing a character. You know, um, my face isn't covered, but I'm in, like, pale makeup right now. And it, it's just, it's amazing. And basically how that happened is, Doing these, you know, small things led to bigger things, and I guess start on Sabrina the Teenage Witch as Frankenstein while I was working at Universal. It was just a funny thing. I was playing them in the park, got cast in a show, and then when I did Jason, Freddy vs. Jason, it was kind of like, okay, it kind of put me on the map in a small way, you know, it was like, okay, there's an iconic character, I get to, you know, people started to hear more of me. And then it just became a thing, and, you know. Now it's just it's just blown up. It's just unbelievable. I'm very very fortunate, you know, to be a working actor today because I know so many people that are struggling, and it's just a very exciting career that I have, you know. Yeah, it definitely seems like it's a uh, it's a career that I you know. I, I definitely wouldn't mind having you know something in the entertainment business. You know, ra- radio is good. I mean, radio is kind of a, a way that a path that I kind of chose as far as uh, to get my to show my love for the entertainment business. Have you ever thought about ever doing like a radio career if uh, if the acting never worked out at all? No, I never really. <laughs> I always wanted to be in front of the camera. You know, like it was something you know growing up and and. You know, high school you know I never I never was thrilled about theater I always wanted to be the guy on camera so that really never was appealing to me but I love doing shows like this you know I've done a lot of radio shows which is great um, it's a great avenue to have new people hear about your work because I find that when I do conventions and things you know people don't necessarily know my name or face but they, they start to put, oh my gosh, you played this guy and you played this guy. Oh, I love that movie. That was you. And then they start to, you know, see all these things and, and realize that it's me. And, and that's a great, great thing to get out there to, to people that may not know. 
yeah. to the guy behind the makeup is, you know? Yep. And that's a, that's a wonderful thing with uh, Sherry. She's going to play this movie on men called Men in Suits. It's a documentary. And whoever is listening to this is in the... Oh, I think we may have lost some long creatures and movies, and me and Doug Jones have been in, and Guillermo del Toro, and and, he, and they actually follow me from the start of a movie that I did, Nights of Bad Aston, from the beginning of the build of this monster to me on set performing them in the movie. And it's really, really interesting um, to see the process and, and what we do and stuff. If you're a fan of this stuff. Oh yeah, and, and I'm definitely a big fan of, of uh, the the character actor and, and even the special effects actor because you know you guys play you, you might you know so, so some might think of the uh, look at the movie or or that type of actor as you know not a main important role in the film, but I I feel differently. I feel like uh, that you guys definitely should be. Uh, uh, well noted and well uh, received for the work that you do because uh, uh, you never know how big of a how big of a role that could play. A lot of people would say that about like the guy who played uh, Sloth in, in the movie The Goonies. You know, it, it was John yeah. Batustic. Yeah, and, and nobody knew who the guy was until many years later, until it was kind of revealed of who who really played him. And that role is so iconic. So you just never know of oh, what kind yeah. of yeah, whatever type of role that you could play it could be the next. Uh, you could be the next superhero or the next uh, new monster that people are talking about. You just never know. Absolutely, and I have several things that are coming out, and I'm shooting one right now, uh, a movie called Havenhurst, and it, you know Daniel Harris is in it. Uh, it's got some really good actors in it, and it's a totally new character, new design, total original custom-built outfit for me, and it's the producer of Saw, and Texas Chainsaw 3D, so they're building it as a franchise, so you never know, this this could go into something huge, and, um, you know, it's one of those things that it, it, it's really neat to be the guy when, that, when something jumps off like that, because what I find is when I go and do uh, interviews and uh, panels and whatnot, I feel people really, really are craving that practical effect. They're tired of CGI, and they see the stuff that I've done, and they go, man, it, it lives and breathes on camera. We want to see more of that. And, and I love that there's directors out there that I'm working with that are fans of it also that want to put it on camera. You know, you can't beat that. Yeah, and, and it's just kind of a good way to, you know, anything that's old school related, because I feel like, uh, and I'm pretty sure you too as a special effects guy would probably think that, uh, that uh CGI would take take away the the job that you love as far as being a character actor because nowadays thanks to computers they could just like you know they could just create whoever they want and, and put it in the movie but but I still think that there's still the love for for the the old way of doing makeup because uh, uh, I know it's a it's definitely a process. I'm sure there's probably a lot of time, a lot of roles that you played where you had to like, you know, like the, just the process of makeup took a took a long time just before you actually went out and, and did your role. Yeah, I mean, there, there's certain uh, there's certain makeups that have been really hard to do, but I've also done motion capture in movies like Thor and Jack the Giant Slayer, and I do not, I don't like that. I'd rather be uncomfortable and be in tons of makeup. And the actors that I'm working with would rather have that also because they actually can relate and see something real as opposed to what they do is put like a tennis ball on a stick and, you know, they have to react to that. Um, and it's, it's one of those things where, you know, your eye can tell the difference when you see something real on camera as opposed to a CGI character. And there's a place for CGI, don't get me wrong. It's a great tool, but when it's used to replace what you can do with amazing makeup. I work with some of the best makeup artists at Academy Award winners, and it, you'll never get the same with CGI. It just you, you're, it looks like a video game to me, you know? And I still think that there's a lot of directors out there, because I'm working with them, that, that want to use practical. Yeah. So. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so it, yeah, it's a good thing. You know, it's a good thing. It's, you know, that they grew up in the 80s. They saw these movies. And they, these effects hold up. You know, they really do. 
So speaking of, of, of 80s, since you since you bring it up, uh, were there uh, did you ever get the chance to meet some of these iconic uh, characters? Uh, you know, like uh, Freddy Krueger, you know, Robert England, uh, Kane Hodder, who was known for uh, playing Jason, or, or even any of the Michael Myers characters at all? Of course. I mean, I, I worked with uh, Robert England and Freddy vs. Jason playing Jason, so I got to work with him and be around him a lot, so... You know, it was a very funny thing. Here I am, like, 22 years old, 23, playing Jason, working with a guy who scared the crap out of me growing up, <laughs> playing off, up, up in Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. Here I am in the hockey mask side by side with him. I mean, that was pretty surreal, I have to say. And, and yeah, I definitely, we've done, like, a lot of conventions with King Hodder, and, and you know, we had the 10-year anniversary for Freddy vs. Jason, last year at Horror Hound and you know all the actors from there were there and Robert England was there and it, uh, you know I've got to meet all of them Michael Berryman and um, guys like that I worked I produced a movie um, and starred in it with Tony Todd so all these guys I kind of grew up with I'm actually working with and are, are doing conventions with so it's a really neat, neat little community to be a part of and you know it's, it's, it's very exciting as I'm, I'm you know every year I'm doing more and more in the career so one of these days you know something big is going to blow up I have a new show that comes out on uh, July 31st called The Quest on ABC and I'm uh, the main villain in the show named Burlox and it's it's in makeup and it's really it's a really uh, cool character that I think audiences are going to really dig you know and I'm speaking in it too so you get to see uh, not just growling stuff which some of those characters are you know the dialogue and Getting into such a, a cool, intense character was a lot of fun. So, how do you think this is going to change your career once you once you become once you once people know that you're the main person in the in the in the main villain in the in the show? Maybe and things like that, people may know my face just because of the interviews and whatnot. But it definitely gets you you out there on a on a national level and. You know, that's a good thing, because it's just more, or more work. Oh, I think, I think we lost him again. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I'm on a Wi-Fi signal, too, so that's why we're probably cutting in and out, just so you know. Oh. Hello. You, you cut out. You cut out again. Uh, well, I just want to say thank you uh, for letting me do this uh, interview Hello. with you. C- can you hear me at all? I think we probably cut out. We've been cutting out in and, in and out here on this interview. Hello. Hello? Hello? <laughs> You're cutting out. Hello? Hello? Hello, hello? Hello. <laughs> We're just having a hello marathon, though. Uh, I'll hello. call. I'll call you back. I'll call you back. Hello. 